Shalom. I'm Charles Elisha Williams with Yahweh Apostolic Ministries. Our mission is to bring the unadulterated gospel of truth to all nations as it was first preached to Israel on the day of Pentecost. We hope that you will discover some new truth in this video and that it will be a blessing to you. Afterwards, I'll be back with information on how you can contact us. Enjoy. to teach the message for today unless someone else has something else. Okay. Um, you can see we're on going to do the next letter in the Hebrew al alpha alphabet. When I stumble like that, I get in between saying alphabet and alphabet. That's what it is. In my mind, I'm about to say alphabet, but I'm going to say alphabet. Alphabet, alphabet, alphabet. Same thing. Part 14. Sheen. Like uh, now, in our um, and we'll pray in just a moment. But uh, in our English, that looks like shin, like the part of the body. But it's actually she in the Hebrew. Now, Lord, we thank you for this message today. We thank you, Yahweh, to minister to minister through songs, Yahweh. We ask Yahweh to bless this message and bless myself, Yahweh, as I, as I bring forth your word, Yahweh. Yahweh, to be all you, Yahweh, nothing of me, Yahweh. In your precious name, help us to receive what you have for us today. In your precious name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. This is the Hebrew alphabet. I know we went through it last week. I'm just going to read the uh, Hebrew alphabet. I'm not going to go through them. We did last week. Aleph, Bait, Gimel, Dalit, Hey. That should be Wa, not Vav. I need to change that. I keep saying that, but I never do. Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yod, or Yud, Kaf, Lamin, Mem, Nun, Samak, Ayin, Pe, Zadi, Kuf, Resh, Shin. <laughs> Thank you. I knew you. I knew you were going to say that, sister. <laughs> I know you've been looking ahead. Next week, next time we'll be doing. The last button. We're not there yet, but that's the last one. That's the 22nd letter. We're at the 21st letter, which is Sheen. Means to eat, to consume, or to destroy. We'll get into that. It looks like a side, it looks like in our English, it looks like an E that fell over on its side in the picture. There it is there. It looks like an E. Makes me want to walk over to the, the graphic on the screen and try to set it up right. But it, anyway, we see here on the, in the picture graph, we see the picture graph Hebrew. Um, and we're going to see another picture of it in a few minutes. Uh, a better looking picture of it, a more uh, descriptive picture. And you see in the modern Hebrew, and I need to take vowel point out in there. Um, the, the modern Hebrew, today's Hebrew. The morphology of Sheen, uh, the gematria, the, or the number that is attached to the letter Sheen is 300. Um, the pentagraph, you see there, the Kitab Avari, which is what, what the picture I wanted to show you, uh, a better looking picture of the Sheen. We'll see another bigger one than that. The Kitab Avari, which is what Messiah would have read from, and the book type, uh, or the modern Hebrew, which is what we see today. Sheen is the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Second, second to the last. It's the number of perfection by excellence. 3 times 7 is 21. And that is your math lesson for this week. Three times the perfect number of seven. 
which is perfection. 21 is used exactly seven times in all of Scripture. Isn't that interesting? 21. Twen the number 21 is used exactly seven times in all of Scripture. It signifies success or victory. Whenever you see a multiple of multiples in Hebrew, it has a meaning. It has it has meanings. This is a multiple of seven. So let's look at it. You have Aleph, which is the ox or the strength of the leader, the strength of the leader. You have Zayin, which is the plow or the weapon or the cut. It it uh, opens up the plow. Fourteenth letter is noon, which is life. And uh, the male, the picture graph looks like a male sperm. It, uh, in Hebrew, it means life. And then you have sheen, which is to consume or to destroy. So you see how the, the multiple of seven, you can go through there and, and put it all together and it comes up with a, a meaning, a, a message in itself. The gematria, or the number attached to Sheen, is 300. There's a lot of significance of 300 in the scriptures. Uh, one is victory over good and evil. I'm sorry, no, that's not it. I'll get into it in just a moment. Getting ahead of myself in my mind. Uh, victory over good, of good over evil. It means the Ruach. Elohim. The Ruach Elohim, if you spell it out in Hebrew, the, the, the Hebrew letters, it equals 300. Isn't that interesting? Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, in the Hebrew numbering, is equal to 300. I thought that was interesting. And in the third person, too. Abba Yahweh, Yahweh Mashiach, and the Ruach. Mm -hmm. Right. Aish, which is fire, is equal to 301. It would have been interesting if it was 300, but it was 301. The fire that consumes. Let's get into some the gematria of 300. This is where I was about to go a minute ago in my mind. Noah's Ark was 300 cubics long. Wasn't 301, wasn't 310, it was 300. Yahweh delivered the Midianites in the Gideon's hand with only 300 men. If you remember the story, uh, men came down, I believe it's the same story that some uh, knelt by the water and drank water a certain way and they were, take, they were sent home. And ended up, the Gideon ended up with 300 men, which he defeated the Midianites with. Samson used 300 foxes to destroy the Philistine crops. Wow. He tied the tails of 300 uh, fox together and destroyed the Philistine crops. Interesting. All these had to do with the number 300. In 2 Samuel chapter 3, the giant spear weighed 300 shekels of brass. So we see the significance how often 300 comes up in the scriptures. You might think, well, 300, that wouldn't be a common number, but yet, yeah, it is. Very much so. Solomon made 300 pure shields. Pure gold shields. He could have made 305 or 250, but he, no. The scripture says he made 300 gold shields. Here's a Paleo Hebrew and a Pitchcraft Hebrew. Paleo Hebrew, what does that look like to someone in here? I knew somebody was going to say that because that's what it does look like. It represents teeth. Or a tooth, I should say. 
<laughs> represents truth. It's literal mean that's the literal meaning for it. She it's truth. Okay? Then that's how you spell it in the Hebrew there. What's its meaning? Not only truth, it's the fire of Yahweh that devours all its enemies, all of his enemies. We're going to see some, some common things here. How the fire of Yahweh that devours, what does teeth devour? Teeth devour food. Yahweh, the fire of Yahweh devours his enemies. It means to consume. What we eat, we consume. We chew down with our teeth and consume, or tooth. It's connected to light and heat. And we'll get into that a little bit later on. Here's some sheen words. Shen. Now I'm going to, I'm probably not going to pronounce these well in the Hebrew. It means a tooth or a sharp rock. Shen, which means name. That's why where we'd say Hashem, the name, or Shen is name in Hebrew. So that means the name of Yahweh, that means name, the name. Yeah, it means name. Shem means name. The Ha means the, and Shen means name, the name. Shamar means to keep or to guard. Shemesh means sun. Shamach means to rejoice. Shalech means to send. Shafat means judgment. Sar means prince or a leader of warriors. Shove means to repent or to return. Shach means to humble. Interesting, shach and shove. We have to be humble when we come before Yahweh to repent and to return to Him. Shakir, Shakir, Shakir means false or lying. And finally, Shalom. And that means peace. These are all sheen words. Let's get into something all interesting here. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. We see it's spirit, spear, the spell there. El Shaddai, 77, the number 7706. Shaddai, it's, all, it's actually in the Hebrew, it's pronounced Shad, Shadahi. Shadahi. And we see it's, uh, there's the spelling of it in the Hebrew. What does it mean? The leader, which is Aleph, of instruction, second letter, Laman. The all-consuming fire, which is uh, Sheen, that opens the door, Dalit, to power. Yod. So what does El Shaddai mean? It means the leader of instruction, or the all-consuming fire that opens the door of power. Shaddai comes from the, the, the uh, base word of 7703, which is Shaddat. 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 Don't end with the T, Charles. It ends with the D. Shaddat. Means to deal violently with, or to despoil, to devastate, or to ruin, or to destroy, or to spoil. Interesting, Shaddad, to de deal violently, to, to deal violently with, to despoil, to devastate, to ruin, destroy, or spoil. Did you know that Sheen is the only letter by itself 
as the only letter in the alphabet that's directly connected to the name of Yahweh by itself. Sheen is. I thought that was interesting. Elohim, my destroyer. I'm here to sit down here. My destroyer? Yeah, the way here. Okay, who is the destroyer? Enemy. Okay, we would, we, that's what we would say. Okay, exactly. We, that's what, the first thing when we say, who is the destroyer? The first thing we say say is Satan. And, I, and that's it's not wrong. I'm not saying that that's wrong. Yahweh is the, I mean Satan is a destroyer. But it's amazing how we take the attributes of Yahweh and give them to Satan. We give them to Hasatan. Jeremiah 51 verses 55 and 56. Listen, listen to this here. Because Yahweh hath spoiled which is 7703, Shaddad, Babylon, and destroyed of, out of her the great voice when her waves do war like great waters. A noise of their voice is uttered because its spoiler, Shaddad, is come upon her, even upon ba Babylon, and her mighty men are taken. Every one of their bows is broken, for Yahweh Elohim of recompense shall surely requite. So we say, we say, who is the destroyer? And everybody would say Hasatan. But yeah. Yahweh also was a destroyer. Was it, let me ask you, was it Satan or Hasatan that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire? No. It was Yahweh that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. Yahweh is the destroyer. Let's look at some, some uh, scripture here. El Shaddai. Genesis chapter 28, verse 3. And Yahweh Almighty, 7706, bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. Yahweh Almighty, or El Shaddai. Ruth chapter 1, verse 20. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, but call me Mara. For the Almighty, 7706 again, hath dealt very bitterly with me. And Mara, the word Mara there means bitter. So we see Almighty again leads back to El Shaddai. Blessings and cursings. Yahweh sets before us blessings and cursings. Blessings if we keep His commandments, and curses if we don't. Simple. Blessings if we keep His commandments, cursings if we don't. Let's look at some scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 through 28. Verse 26, Behold, this is Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 26 through 28. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Check that already. He's saying, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing, if you keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you this day. And a curse, if you will not obey the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim. But turn aside out of the way which I have commanded you this day to go after other Elohims, I should not say gods, I should say Elohims, or well, gods, in this case it was lowercase, which have, you have not known. So in this first scripture it shows, I have set before you, I have set before you blessings and cursings. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. He says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose life, blessings, and both thou and thy seed, that, that both thou and thy seed may live. 
Jeremiah, Jeremiah 21, verse 8. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Blessings and cursings. It's a blessing if we follow Yahweh and be obedient to His word. And it's a cursing if we do not. It's a curse also if we follow Yahweh and then turn away from what we know. On Mount Sinai, what was on the top of Mount Sinai when Yahweh was giving the commandments? Fire. Fire. It was fire on the top of the hill. Yes. Deuteronomy 424 and Hebrew 1229 say that Yahweh is a fire of someone. Yes. Yeah, we're going to get into them actually. I think a little bit later on we're going to actually get into them through scriptures. Okay, so on the top of the Mount Sinai was Yahweh. When Yahweh was given the commandments, they saw fire. Let's look at some attributes of fire. Fire is very interesting. We're fire. Fire is very interesting. If I was to say fire, you would probably automatically associate it with hell and damnation. I, if you were to ask me, before looking at this PowerPoint here, of course, um, like a week ago, if you were to ask me to say fire, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you say fire? I say, would say destruction or to destroy. Because that's what fire does. There are two sides to every coin. There's a startling revelation for you. Everybody get out a coin and now look. Make sure there's two sides to every coin. Well, also purify and clean. Right? Right, right. This is, look at some attributes of fire. It starts with friction. Fire starts with friction. If you ever were ever a um, yeah, I was about to say cowboy. Boy Scout or Girl Scout. I don't know if they did in Girl Scout, but I know Boy Scouts we did. You rub two sticks together to start a fire. And you still do today if you're you're a survivalist out there in the woods. You have to rub two sticks together. What does that do? It creates friction, which starts a fire. So if, why is it an attribute of, of fire? It starts with it starts with friction. I said that there's two sides to every coin. You know, it could be that it starts with friction. You rub two sticks together and, you know, you start a fire and then the fire gets out of control. You know, in a spiritual sense, you can have friction between husband and wife. Between saints, between just people, co workers. Someone could rub you the wrong way. Someone can say something that just rubs you the wrong way. Has anybody in here had that? Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> I've had that in work, where I work. Somebody says something to me that just rubs me the wrong way. Friction. It can be a good thing. But then again, it could be a bad thing too. How can it be a good thing? Love and marriage. Two people, when they come together in marriage, that love, that, that friction between them, the love between them, and they get married. But then you can have friction after the, the couple gets married also. True, true story. I heard of someone. I, I happen to know someone who, and I might have said this before, the person, the man got married. There's nobody here in South Carolina or Georgia or anything. No one but myself and my wife probably know who it is. Um, this person got married. 
I guess they were happily married for, what was it, a week, a month? I think a month at the most. And they divorced. Why? Because there was friction. That must have been some friction, huh? That must have started some kind of fire. <laughs> to be married for a month and then get, you know, get divorced. Of course, I don't condone divorce. Only in certain situations, but, you know, this person's not safe. And now he's, he remarried, as far as I know, and he's very happily married with a child. With at least a child. So in marriage, it can start be good and be bad. It never keeps to itself. It's always moving. The good and the bad. Fire in itself. If it's in the forest, it doesn't stay in one little place. A little fire, a little campfire, if it's not controlled, doesn't stay in that one little place. We had a little uh, fire outside the, the trailer here in the back. There was uh, some uh, stuff we were burning, and uh, the, the fire got out of control. Thankfully, we were able to contain the fire. But the fire did not stay in that one little area where we were burning. It's the same thing also with the tongue, which we're going to get into a little later on, towards the end. Yeah, you say something about that. We're, we're going to get into them scriptures. We're actually going to read them scriptures at the very, towards the very end of the message today. That we can bless Yahweh and curse our brother, yep. curse man. That's right. And you know, you, even in work, you can say, well, you know what Susie did? I had to think real quick of a name of someone that we don't know. <laughs> Susie. Well, you're Susie. You know what Susie told me? You know what Susie did? You know, she said she did this. Do you know it doesn't stop there? That little fire, that little fire there doesn't stop there. You get to the boss. It goes from person to person. Oh, you know what I heard? And you never said the same thing. Yeah. Not a little bit. Yeah, the story, the story might start as an inch long, but it ends up at the end to be a mile long. Because there's something always that's never translated the same from person to person. And it, and it usually gets worse and worse. Ouch. It can be a bad thing. Because it doesn't stay there. And all of a sudden you have a group of people who are looking down at Susie. Because <laughs> Su Susie did this one little thing. She, you know, she did this one little thing. And, it seemed like it was a murder, right? Yeah, now it's like a major, you know, federal, federal crime or something, you yeah. know. Now somebody mm. want to kill Susie. <laughs> yeah, everybody's going after Susie. <laughs> But also, the fire of Yahweh, the Ruach HaKadosh in us, shouldn't be kept to ourselves either. Yahweh doesn't want us to keep what we have to ourselves. He wants us to spread that fire that's in us. It seeks to consume. Fire seeks to consume. When it and it start when it starts in the forest, it keeps going. It doesn't keep to itself. It looks to consume more and more and more. It seeks to consume everything in its path. We've heard of uh, these big forest fires in California. I think it was last year, they had a bunch of them. One little fire didn't keep to itself. And it consumed and consumed and consumed. 
the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, wants to consume not only us, deep in our hearts, but He wants us to give it to others so they can be also consumed with His Spirit. It divides. Another attribute of fire, it, it divides. It divides the good from evil. It can divide. It can take a path down a, a way, a certain way, and divide land. Consuming one part of the land, and then they, in fires, I think they set up like a fire, what's called a firewall. It sounds like something with computers, but um, <laughs> somewhere where they, they spread sand or something and it stops the fire from spreading. There's a division. You know, the, the, the fire of Yahweh wants to divide. He wants to separate. He wants, us to, sep he wants to separate that good and evil battle within us. You see, there's a battle within us. There's a battle within us, good and evil. It's seeking to divide us and destroy us like fire. But Yahweh wants us to be consumed with His fire. Hallelujah. It mainly burns trees. It mainly burns wood. What are we considered? We're considered trees. Yahweh wants that Holy Spirit fire to consume us. When you have the spiritual fire of Yahweh in your life, it's designed to destroy everything that's not of Yahweh in your life. Yahweh has that, that Holy Spirit fire, the spiritual fire within you, to destroy anything that's not of Him. Fire pr produces light. And the light, the enemy cannot exist in the presence of light. Fire produces light. Yes, sister. Is not that the Yahweh HaMashiach came to bring divisions to in Matthew 10? Yes, yes, it does say that. It says that in Matthew. The book of Matthew says uh, he came to not to bring peace, but a sword. Yeah. A sword is, can divide, separate, or divide. Where does fire come from? Right, she <laughs> <laughs> At least somebody was paying attention earlier, huh? <laughs> Where does fire come from? It comes from Yahweh. Fire comes from Yahweh. Hmm, I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway. He is an all-consuming fire. That's what the scripture says. There's like three scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24. And yet, for Yahweh, thy Elohim is a consuming fire, even a jealous Elohim. That's Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 3 says, Understand therefore this day that Yahweh, thy Elohim, is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them. How's he going to destroy them? As a consuming fire. And he shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly, as Yahweh hath said unto thee. In Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, made to heaven the Vihu. This is the story, of, the beginning of the story of Nadab and Abihu, the son of Aaron. The priest, Aaron. He took either of them his censer and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange 
fire, I should have meant to put strange fire in red there, strange fire before Yahweh, which he commanded them not. And there went out from Yahweh and devoured them, and they died before Yahweh. There went out a fire from Yahweh. Yahweh consumed Nadad and Abihu with fire because they offered strange fire. They offered something, a fire that was not of Yahweh. And Yahweh saw it and destroyed them. The meaning of Sheen means the fire of Yahweh that devours all his enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Means to consume. It's connected to light and heat. What's the sun made of? It's basically one big fireball, correct? Well, this morning I was walking through my house and I uh, there was a little bit of light on the, on the floor where I was walking. And I, I, I was in the midst of studying. I was going to do something. And I walked over. I went to, and did what I needed to do and I was walking back. I sat back down. I looked at that little spot. It was coming through the door. It was the sun coming through the door, glass of the door. It was on, reflecting on the floor there. And it was neat because I was just in this area of the of the study when I was doing it this morning, and that just came to me. I got back up, I walked over, and I put my foot. I, I was in bare feet at the time, and I put my foot on the spot where the light was at on the rug. It was warm, it was from hot, of course, it would have burned, but it was warm. And then this came to mind. It's connected to the light and heat. It was produced from light on the floor and heat from the sun. I thought that was kind of neat. Some more. I don't know. That shouldn't be in there. Neither should that. Okay, two different kinds of fire. There's two different kinds of fire. One is the negative, hell, lake of fire, and punishment. That's one kind of, of uh, fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Okay, there you go. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. What is what the different kind of fire? Oh, sorry. It's okay. Okay, there's the scripture again. I messed up the PowerPoint here. Luke chapter 9, verses 54 through 56. And when his disciples, James and John, saw that they saw saw this, they said, Yahweh, will thou that we could command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy man's lives, but to save them. And he went to another village. You see, it's not our place to destroy, to call down fire from heaven. That's Yahweh's job, not ours. The second kind of fire is a positive type of fire. Love. Purifying. A zeal. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. 
His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. In the scripture, do you know where the fire comes from? It comes from the altar, the, the throne of Yahweh. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them by the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Now I'm sure this pillar of fire at night wasn't just like a little matchstick type of light. A pillar of fire, it must have been pretty bright. And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with dark, with darkness, clouds, and a thick darkness. Stood under the mountain. This is Deuteronomy chapter four, verse eleven. The mountain burned with fire in the midst of heaven. The nature of fire, in its most base, basic form. Fire takes a complex, dense matter made up of many atoms and reduces it to a more simpler form, namely gases. That's the nature of fire. It takes complex, dense matter made up of many atoms and reduces it to gases. It produces light and heat. Get that sun on the floor a bit. Okay. I'm on fire. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Interesting. It's an interesting thing here. He could have picked anything to light on fire. To speak through, to speak to, to Moses. But he, spoke, he spoke to him through a bush, wood, a burning bush. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 12 says, And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before Yahweh. His hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Interesting is that the censer of burning coals, of fire. Isn't there a scripture that says that you shall heap burning coals of fire on your enemies? Why? It's not to see them destroyed. The coals of fire were used for purification. Heap those, heap those coals of fire upon your enemies so that they too can be purified from their sin and come unto Yahweh. Tongues of fire. Romans chapter 12, uh, 12 verses 20 and 21. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Here's, the, here's that scripture I was just talking about. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome evil, but overcome evil with good. We can't... We, in doing so, we keep coal, coals of fire upon their head. Acts chapter 2, verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and sat upon each of them. Interesting. Cloven tongues, like as a fire. Could have been anything, but it was fire that was used. 
So what did they do after after that? After, after Acts chapter 2 verse 3. Where they received clo the cloven tongues. Acts chapter 2 verse 11. Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues. The wonderful works of Elohim. You see, after they received the Holy Spirit, the cloven tongues, the Holy Spirit, they went out to proclaim the wonderful works of Yahweh. When we've been consumed by the true fire from Yahweh, you have no time for complaining, attacking your brethren, or even looking back to Egypt, which is sin. You can only declare His majestic and glorious works. Amen. If we're consumed by the, the true fire from Yahweh, all we want to do is declare His works. We don't want to look back at Egypt, look back at sin, but we want to declare His glorious works. brings death and life. She brings death and life. Can bring death and life. Exodus chapter 32 verse 28. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell on, on the people that day about 3,000 men. I, I was reading back in the scripture a little bit and on this. They told them that the, the children of Levi to take their swords out and to kill the brothers and, the, and their friend, everyone. 3,000 people. 3,000. Both of these happened. I blinked out on me. Both of these instances, although I know what it says, both of these instances here happened on Shaviot. They, Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, or the day of Shaviot. Exodus chapter 32 was that same day, Shaviot. Shaviot. James chapter 1, verse 26 says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, he did, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. The word vain there is empty, worthless, worthless. That's what the word vain means. So if a man, you see someone who was not bridling their tongue, we need to be careful. We're going to read James chapter 3. We're actually going to read the whole chapter. Because the whole chapter is good and it fits in context with what we're reading here about the tongue. My brethren, be not many be not many masters, know what what we shall receive. We shall receive a greater condemnation. For many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able to also to fight all the whole body. Behold it, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Behold, the ships, also the ships, which thou, though, though they be great, are driven with fierce winds, yet are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is a tongue among all members, it, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and setteth on fire of hell. For it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and birds and serpents and things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil full of 
deadly poisons. Therewith, lest we Yahweh, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made in the similitude of Yahweh. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Doth a fountain set forth in the same place sweet water and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine figs. So no fountain both can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. Who is wise, a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not. Lie not against the truth. This is wisdom. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easily to be treated, full of mercy and good fruits, without, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of, fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So we see a lot of stuff there about the tongue. Of course, everyone has probably read those scriptures over and over again. But it talks a lot about the tongue. El Shaddai. Something very interesting, and I, I believe we're going to be closing with this here. El Shaddai. That's El Shaddai in Hebrew. Sheen and Noon. Sheen, Tet, and Noon is Hasatan. Interesting. El Shaddai, all consuming fire. all-consuming fire. What's noon? I'm throwing a blanket at this moment. I, I studied and studied and studied this. Noon. Come on, somebody, somebody, Sister Williams. Life, thank you. I studied and studied and studied and I just drew a blanket on what noon meant. Night, life. She, the all-consuming fire of life. El Shaddai. But notice, if you put that tet in there, now you have she, all consuming fire, tet. When is tet? Someone, tet, snake in the basket. The snake oh, in the yeah. basket. Decision. We have to come to a decision. That snake in the basket, surround. It also, snake in the basket it also means surround. To surround. <coughs> so we go from all consuming fire that brings life. And you add that one letter in there, tet. And all of a sudden you have the all consuming fire that surrounds noon or life. It totally changes the meaning the, the, the whole thing. Hasatan. It spells Hasatan because he is the one the all-consuming fire that surrounds life. If anyone in here is a gardener, which I am not, I'll be the first to tell you I'm not a gardener. If you're a gardener and you go into your garden and you have weeds, you have flower, a flower bed or you have fruit or whatever, vegetables, and you have weeds in there, you have to pull the weeds. 
Because weeds surround, consume, uh, don't allow the vegetables or flowers or whatever it is to grow. It's the same thing with Hasatan. His all-consuming fire will surround us, surround somebody, and consume their life. will consume their life. El Shaddai. Dear viewers, we are living in the last days. We invest time and effort to bring you quality content for the benefit of your soul. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. You will receive notifications on when we upload new videos and when we stream our services live. If this video has edified you, give it a thumbs up. Finally, spread the truth around the world by sharing this video in every way you can. Thank you for watching.